super excited to finally have all the components in to put the uh, vacuum kiln back together. I want to give a shout out to Tom Montgomery at, at Chemtech Scientific for, for helping me uh, get this far and walking me through some of the critical steps and helping me acquire a much more larger and robust uh, vacuum pump to hopefully get some better, deeper, quicker drying times than before. So looking forward to putting it to back together. Acquired some crazy looking vacuum connections that I didn't have before. Uh, so uh, looking forward to seeing how it turns out. What I'm really liking about these vacuum fittings is that there's no wrong orientation. Like if you're using threaded connections or an NPT, the you're always hoping that the thread bottoms out in the in the position you want or tightens up in the position you want. Where these the uh, orientation of them is endless. Plus, they look cool. They look like something that belongs on a spaceship. Tell you what, I'm not too impressed with these clamps. The uh, maker of them, I, pur I purchased them on Amazon, but the maker of them didn't do a whole lot of. Uh, finish work and the edges are very sharp on them. Looks like they were just lasered out, put together. I got the pump filled with oil. We got the lid ready to go. Uh, got a few things plumbed in here. I thought I'd walk you through it. We got a regular analog gauge. This is just to monitor the beginning of the process to make sure we actually are pulling a, uh, a vacuum. This is not accurate at all. When it gets into the deeper vacuums, uh, we're gonna, this precision gauge will be connected to this probe here, and we'll be able to monitor the deeper vacuums with this precision gauge. This is another Chemtech product. Got a ball valve sitting right here so that we can uh, release the vacuum if needed. This is just for our, our data and our power. We got a USB port cord in here. We have an eight conductor for our thermocouples, and we have power. This coupling right here is completely filled with hardened epoxy to create the seal around the, the cables. This little guy right here is just a small little inexpensive controller that is capable of monitoring vacuum pressure. The, the idea here is that if it gets above 10 tor, that it would shut the pump off. And the reason for that is this pump cannot operate at higher pressure needs to operate at lower pressures. It can only operate at higher pressures for a short period of time. So anything above 10 tor, it begins to lose a little bit of oil and over time you'll burn your pump out. So this is gonna keep us for a little bit of a fail safe. And I just feel like I said, I just filled it up with oil. So I'm gonna let it sit overnight, make sure we don't have any leaks in the morning and give it a shot. All right, about to test this thing out. We got it all plumbed up, sealed up. Should be getting quieter as this gets lower. Let's see what happens.
are officially below 10 tour. So awesome. Excited. Now let's see how low can we go. I got two pieces of sinker cypress here. It's still plenty of saturation still left in it to, to do some testing. We're right around 20 on the um, on the moisture content, so we're gonna put our, our heat and blanket in. We got our thermocouple set up. We even got a camera in there to see if it'll it'll survive the vacuum. And uh, I'm excited. Let's see what happens. I just got it closed up. We got our moisture reading meter up ran to the outside, sitting at 570 tour, 100 degrees on the thermocouple, zero on the controller, because we're not pulling a vacuum yet. Let's get started. far so good way below 10 tour we're at, sitting at 5.3 right now we got 110 degrees on the on the heat and blanket you can see on the video you can actually see some of the water coming out of the water bottle that i left in there so looking good i just got invited to a crawfish ball so priorities are priorities i'll have to pick back up on it tomorrow but i'm gonna let it run overnight hopefully we'll, have, we'll see some significant change in the multimeter i mean in the uh moisture meter <laughs> Well, I'm well into my, my second attempt here and things are going good so far. This time I have a uh, larger piece of wood loaded in. It's the, you put the top here of this uh, cross section of a stump. These are going to be the base of a large conference table. So I got one of these actually loaded in there right now. This time I used a smaller, uh, less expensive pump to start the process. So this pump is not capable of pulling down deep vacuums. However, it will get me to the point where uh, the, the larger pump is not having to do all of the work. So I, I set it on this little port first. And I let it start running and it got down to about 100 tour and it wouldn't go any deep, bit deeper than that. So let it hang out there for a little bit, pulled whatever air and moisture I could out of the chamber and then shut it off, tapped it off and ran the larger pump until until it achieved below 10 tour. We're hanging out about mid eight tour, which I'm not really uh, proud of. I, I've seen it, I've seen this chamber sealed off better than this and, and work better than this in the, in the, in the first run. So I'm, I'm kind of gonna, gonna look into that a little bit more after this run, but I should be getting numbers a little bit lower than eight tour. But nevertheless, it is working. The exciting thing is, is that I can watch the moisture levels and, and see them come down. The oil is staying much cleaner this time than, than the first time, now that the chamber's clean. So just monitoring it all, keeping an eye on it, it looks, like, looks good so far. So we're seeing 6.7 tour right now. That's kind of low. I've been, it's been fluctuating between six and, and nine as it off gases. The uh, temperature's hanging out around 60 degrees. This started off at 73. So yeah, we've lost 13 degrees already. Just kind of keep an eye on that, make sure we're not freezing our wood during the evaporation process. The um, exciting thing though, is that this started off around 18%, now we're at 16.1. So it is dropping, steady, steadily dropping. And uh, we'll see what it winds up. It's been about three hours so far, so got a little ways to go still, but, but it's working.
the new pump's doing a lot better this go-round. Uh, it's staying much cooler. Hanging out around 100 degrees. The, uh, the oil is still collecting a little bit of moisture. What's happening is here in South Louisiana, we have a high moisture content. I'm sitting around 90% 90, 90 humidity right now. So that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for the moisture that's trying to be removed from from the saturation of the wood. It's winding up. It just it's, it's almost like it's raining inside the tank, the oil tank, as that moisture wicks through there. So the, the oil is picking up quite a bit of it, which tells me I need to do a, a little bit better job of capturing that oil. Right now it's sitting on the base of this 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 oil sump, and what I'm doing every now and then is I'm opening up this petcock and just draining it out and then topping it back off as the process continues. That seems to be working right now, but I think what I can do later on is, is, is have a, a larger reservoir sitting on the side with a little bit of a water trap to where I, I, can, I can capture that water and deal with it for a longer period of time and not have to keep babysitting it. But right now, very pleased. Like I said, the moisture content in the wood is dropping. I'm able to see that on the meter. So, so, so far, so good. So after being in the chamber 12 hours and going in at some over 30% moisture content, it's coming out at six and a half. You can tell by the sheer weight of this thing, it's so much lighter than it was before. I couldn't handle it by hand before. Now I'm able to move it around pretty easily. Overall, it worked. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. I can see by just looking in here, I got a little bit of Moisture is being reintroduced inside the chamber from the front seal, so I got some work to do there. I'm looking forward to automating some of the processes that I was having to do by hand. Got a little bit of checking, but that's to be expected for this size piece of wood. Like I said, overall it worked. I'm excited.